Judy. Please join me in welcoming Ken Cassidy. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, I want to tell you a story about a remarkable woman. Her name is Judy. I don't know exactly where she was born or what year or where she was born or what year she was born, but I do know that she grew up in East LA in the Watts area in the 60s, 50s and 60s. She didn't really know who her father was. She thought that he lived in Dallas, Texas, and did go down to visit a man down there in Dallas who actually lived about a half a mile from Lee Harvey Oswald before he took JFK's life. She didn't know her mother. Her mother was a, a, a fantastic woman that died very young some complications dealing with weight and heart problems. She didn't, she didn't really know her grandmother, and we don't really know what happened to her either. She had a, a very interesting, very difficult upbringing. Her, her family that she had in LA was very distant, very broken, but she was a special, special woman. She found a man, probably chased after a man. His name was Tom. He lived on the beach. He was her knight in shining armor. He was the one that was going to rescue her from everything that she didn't want to be in, a place that she didn't like, a dangerous place that had a lot of uproar in it at the time. And Tom came in. Tom was this amazing man who worked for the NASA program and the Apollo program. He sent, he worked on the, the rockets and the, and the transportation modules that went up to the moon. It took Buzz Aldrin to step on the moon and was involved in the Apollo 13 program and watched that limp back to Earth. She was very special. Tom loved them, her, and they got married and had kids. First boy they had, they had in Orange, California, about two blocks from the Crystal Cathedral and about four blocks from Disneyland. She had an amazing way about her. She served people. She was probably the most amazing servant you'd ever want to meet. She loved kids, and she loved friends and family. She was an amazing woman. Everybody loved Judy. Everybody. Well, to make a better life for themselves, for themselves, they moved up to Orville, California, out of the out of the LA area, which if you've ever been to Orville, it's a good place to be from. I it's an amazing place, full of of people that that or want to get away from L.A. Basically, at that time, in the 70s, they were just flying out of L.A. to go to Northern California. Amazing thing happened in Oroville. They found a community of people in their church and friends that did it, all kinds of things. My mom was in, or Judy <laughs> was an amazing athlete. She did all kinds of amazing activities. She was an amazing skier, downhill snow skier. She was an amazing water skier. <coughs> it wasn't uncommon to see my mom water skiing on one ski with one arm with a cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> Just like this. And they loved the pictures of it all too, back in the day when that was fashionable. Kind of funny, right? She was an amazing swimmer. And she taught her kids how to swim. And her kids were accomplished swimmers as well. Did very, very well as young swimmers in meets all across Northern California. She taught all of the kids in, the, in her neighborhood how to swim. 
She taught little babies. She'd throw those little six-month-olds in the, in the water and watch them go down, and they'd float back up. And he'd walk, they, people would look at their little babies in fear. And my mom would just sit on the side. Judy would sit on the side of the pool and just watch them and then go again and get them. Because she knew babies could do it. They wouldn't drown. Amazing. She was also a cross-country skier. They would, she would be in charge of taking families in the woods in the, in the wintertime and cross-country skiing and go camping, have big bonfires. She served people. She loved people. Stop. Something was wrong. She had headaches. She couldn't figure out why. What was it? focus anymore. She started to kind of go crazy. Nothing made any sense anymore. She would, she would have fits of anger, and then she'd be totally secluded. And that wasn't Judy. Judy was really involved. She was so involved in people's lives and helping them. Now she was recluse and drawing back. Was it cancer? Could it be a brain tumor? She just couldn't figure it out. Well, after tests, it was multiple sclerosis. And this wonderful woman that was full of life and energy started to wonder what's going on. But she was never daunted. She never, at that time, she still had her kids. She still had family. She still had friends. And so she was very encouraged by that. Tom, her knight in shining armor, couldn't handle it. He just couldn't handle it. He didn't know what to do. And he left. And Judy shook constantly. She shook like this constantly. She couldn't talk or anything. She just shook like this. And she'd be in her chair and she'd shake it in her chair. Multiple sclerosis started to take more and more of her life. More and more of it. So she gave up. She was going to lose her kids. She was 98 pounds and frail. And she, she gave up. And it's <coughs> a sad thing to see someone who has so much life. She had nothing else to live for. She actually choked on a cookie in the hospital. She was a winner. She had to get that cookie. But she couldn't. She shook so much she couldn't handle it. Why is this woman so special? Because she's my mom. And she, I'm special. And I, I don't remember much about her. But I know this. I got the person I am today is because of 